Hello, hello everyone. I have a few minutes late. Please excuse me. I was over on the zoo, the Stamping Zoo Demonstrators page because I am so happy to report we are now a team of six. Yes, that's right. There are five other demonstrators. I had three new demonstrators join my team during this fabulous joining special. You know what? You have a few more hours to, <laughs> to sign up. I won't quit until 11.59 Mountain Time. So you have a few more hours to sign up and join and become a part of a crafty little group um, who are going to inspire and um, encourage each other and have lots of laughs. As well as, oh, did I mention a 20% discount on all of your purchases? Yes, it's just the beginning of all the cool things that go on when you sign up to get the starter kit from uh, Stampin' Up. You can find out all about that if you follow my emails. And you can also just call me, 208-830-6328, and I will be happy to send you the link. Don't call me at midnight. Don't call me at midnight crying. It will be too late. You can always sign up, but you can't get this great deal, which is right now for $75 plus tax you will receive $125 in product of your choice, a free paper pumpkin kit, free business supplies, and a 20% discount on your purchases at least through the end of March. And after that, if you choose. If you do not choose, we don't do anything. You don't have to send back the product. Um, Lord, you don't have to give me any of your kids. Let's not start all that. So you just have to um, really try and buy, or you have to try, and then if you like it, you continue uh, with your discount. If you don't care for it or don't want to purchase that much product or whatever the reason is, then you just come back to me as a customer. No worries. So with that, um, <laughs> uh, 10 minutes ago I realized that I had forgotten the bundle that I was going to use tonight, the whimsical trees or whatever. Um, so guess what? We're gonna, we are going to case me, okay? I'm gonna case myself because I love this tree. No, it's called tapered angle fold. I wanna call it a tree fold because obviously I put a big tree on the front of it. It's so cute though. Um, oh, Kathy Sheely is really tired, but she'll hang on a while. Kathy, if it helps, me too. <laughs> I hit that, I hit the live button before I thought about it too much. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. And I've got, well, I've got vitamin water. I don't know how, you know, that just takes care of everything, doesn't it? I wish. Hello, Roz. How are you doing? And Pam, and there's Julie. Hi, Julie. Oh gosh, yes, it's been quite a day here. I worked from home all day and then at 5.15, I decided I could either continue being lazy or I could get up and walk the dogs. And so guess what? I did that. <laughs> I walked the dogs. I think they were shocked as well um, because when they came home, they acted like they needed to take a little nap. Okay, now listen, you guys, just beat it. It's only seven o'clock. They're right behind me again. Hello, Ina. I think it's Ina. Aloha, Ina, I should say. <coughs> Welcome, everyone. Okay, so let's get started, right? We're going to use tonight. Now, Roz, you please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry, you guys, just a minute. <coughs> I had to use my inhaler right before I came on here. And so I guess I'm not quite finished yet with not being able to breathe. <laughs> no bummer. I mean, no big deal. Oh my gosh, Leslie, it's the first day of summer and it's going to be 100 degrees. <laughs> oh man. Oh gosh. Okay, so Roz, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe these items are continuing over as well as the fantastic dyes that go with them. Now they may, I, I don't remember now if they, um, are going to be in an annual catalog or in a holiday catalog and maybe we don't even know that all you need to know is why not purchase them now you and you'll have like several several months to use them we'll be using them again next holiday season 
and you can use all of these label dies all in between. I don't think I'm going to give up using them. Uh, so anyway, let's see what we can do. Let's see if I remember how to make this card. I do have a tutorial for it. Thank goodness. So uh, I will, I'm going to try and demonstrate it for you. Oh, how is everyone? This is a Tuesday night, a little, an odd night for me, right? But um, I just have all these cards and I want to show you how to make them. It's, that's part of my fun is coming on and having you uh, tell me all sorts of things about if you've made these cards or not. Um, if you, you know, I've seen alternates, but basically this is, uh, just has a belly band and then it has some fun DSP cut at an angle on the front, the two fronts, and it opens up. Just has a nice little space for writing. I think as long as you just kind of watch it and don't write in here, then you're good to go. You have a lot of space in there still. And so anyway, this one is, again, there might be modifications you can make to it, but um, this is what we're gonna make tonight. <laughs> Roz, yours are too. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I guess it's dry here. Oh, I know what's happening. We have what's called an inversion. Uh, we have bad air quality right now. I don't, I don't know why I didn't remember that. <laughs> I should have remembered it because I sound like I've been smoking again, which I never have. So that's my first clue. Okay, so to switch this up to case myself, of course, I want to use this beautiful paper is called Painted Christmas. It was also in the suite with Christmas season stamps and the seasonal label dies. <coughs> oh goodness, that's annoying. I'm going to start with um, my brother. One moment, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to have a cherry cobbler base. Nice, rich color. I may resist the urge to use my favorite piece of paper in, in the package, but there are so many others that go with it that will look really nice. And then we'll have, of course, a cute belly band, probably with a couple of pine cones on it. Oh, this might be fun to use in that case. I don't know if I want to use that with the cherry cobbler, though. I would want to use that, I believe, with Evening Evergreen. Let's take a look. Maybe this will be a you choose kind of thing. Hello, Lori. Hey, KZ. Oh, KZ says it's sharing time, folks. Yes, please share this video. If you're enjoying it so far, my coughing, <laughs> if you would like to share that with friends and family, um, please feel free to do so. I promise I'll stop coughing here pretty soon. And um, I'm just happy that you would introduce me to your friends. That's what I feel like sharing a video is. So you feel like it's okay if you introduce me to your friends. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And that's how we find new stampers, right? That's how you find out which of your friends are stampers. It's very fun. Ooh, Leslie got her new mini today. Excellent. And you've ordered. Yeah, because today is your first. Because I am going to be able to order in just a few hours. <laughs> that's one of the benefits of becoming a demonstrator. And it's really not, I shouldn't even call it a demonstrator, but technically that's what the company calls it. But really you can be a demonstrator and just be your own customer. So just know that um, you don't have to run a business. Okay. All right. I have just talked myself into this. I think this is so pretty. So let's start with this. You will need about a piece of cardstock for the card. Okay. So you're not going to get two out of a piece of card. Yeah, Julie says she's her own customer, and I'm sure you treat your customer very well, don't you, Julie? <laughs> yes, you say, you know what, customer, I think you need this today, because you know what? You have a demonstrator discount, so we're all treated the same. What you do with it is up to you. That's the part that's really cool about it. Stampin' Up doesn't pressure you to do any weird things that you don't want to do. Okay, with that, and neither do I, really. I might pressure you to tell me what colors you like on a card, but other than that, no, that's it. Okay, let's see here. 
the mint macaron oh sorry i'm reading my instructions five and a half by eleven so we need to make a piece so we need to bring out the arm on our paper trimmer hello gare <laughs> and i hope you can see this let me move some stuff let me move my bills out of the way bills so we start with five and a half by 11. Of course, our paper is 11, right? So we can go five and a half here. And with a fun fold, well, with any fold, but with a fun fold, you want to, you know, watch your cutting and your scoring. Make sure your blades are nice and sharp, which our cutting blades on this paper trimmer are excellent. Okay, so five and a half by 11. Score at three and three eighths and seven and five eighths. And as I'm saying this, why don't I just send this tutorial out in the next couple of days? Let's say by Friday or on Friday, I will send this out uh, to my email subscribers. So if you are not currently an email subscriber, please go over to the stampingzoo.com and there will be a purple pop up box that will ask you if you want to be a subscriber. Yes, you do, <laughs> because that's where you're going to get all these great tutorials, okay? So, three and three-eighths, and I almost messed that up. Three and one, two, three. You are talking and doing a fun fold. It's very different than just doing it by yourself. Trust me. And seven and five-eighths, four and five. I know, because I mess it up sometimes when I'm here. Okay, and so now we have the, um, so we have like the opening of the card, right? And now we're gonna do all this weird stuff to it. All right, so this is the top of our card. We're going to bring this in. We will burnish the folds later. You can do it now if you want to, but you're gonna line up this score. Now also know that I'm left-handed, right? So you may use your paper trimmer upside down, but the measurements are the same. So what you want to do for the top cuts on the card is you want to put the a score line, the inside score line right there, and then you want to have the outside point right where this ends. At the uh, the white part ends that is one and a half inches okay so you put your <clears throat> and you almost have to have this down at the bottom you almost have to have this that's how you know if you're doing it right you have to basically have this um, cardstock clear down at the bottom to do it right and I like to check my angle a couple of times because again that's what's going to make it come together nicely in the front versus looking a little cockeyed. Okay, and cut. Okay, now I want you to do that same thing to this side. Now I'll show you what I would do if I was a right-handed person. Put it in the cutting, the cutting um, where the cutting blade's going to be, and then bring this to the one and a half mark. So if I look down here, it's one and a half. Okay, if I just follow it up with my little finger, I can see that it's this line. So I kind of put my finger on it and then pivot this back into the cutting track. Is this making sense? Is everyone picking up what I'm putting down? Hello, Corinne. Nice to see you. It might be Karina, but I think it's Corinne. I'm just feeling like it's probably Corinne. So anyway, hello. Okay, that's the top of the card, okay? Remember where I told you to jump not right in the top? Okay, but now the bottom is a little wonky too. So, we are going to do the same thing, well, almost the same thing. You're going to, so this was the corner we cut down to. You're going to put that one into the cutting track, and then this time you're just gonna put your line, or you're going to put your bottom point of your card on the one inch mark, okay? Just the one inch mark and cut. Okay, now that's left-handed. Now here's right-handed, right? So you take this, um, so this was the top part. You cut down to here. 
Then you take this part and you pivot it down until you hit the one inch line. Okay, we're all doing good. You kind of double check yourself there. So don't make a fool of yourself on your Facebook. <laughs> I agree, Roz. Like I've made three now, I think, and probably one wrong one. And it makes a lot more sense to me now. Okay, look. That's what happens. Now you have the outside. <gasps> so fun. So let me see. Where is our finished card so you can get a visual again of what that looks like? Where'd that silly thing go? Okay. So it's this part. Okay. So you've got all that done in this beautiful evening evergreen. I love it so much. It's one of the newest in colors. Not to be missed. Okay, now we have to cut the DSP, which sounds like it would be really, or looks like it might be difficult, right? Not so much. We are going to want two pieces of the DSP for the front. And just keep in mind that if you're using something that's directional, um, you know, keep an eye on that. Like my trees were directional. So when I was cutting, I had to think about which was the top and which was the bottom. Okay, we need to have let's see oh I need to scroll down in my instructions sorry again you don't need to worry about this because I'm gonna send this to you as part of being on my email list but it's three and a quarter by five and a quarter okay so I feel like I cut some off of that five and a quarter and then we'll do two pieces that are three and a quarter isn't this a beautiful look at that oh I love it and then three and a quarter yes if you tried to make this full but you don't have a trimmer oh I mean a Stampin' Up trimmer Corinne you can fix that for $25 and I'm telling you what, this trimmer is so great. It's just easy to take places. and Oh, and if you order when Celebration is live, then, um, you know, you can put that towards earning your Celebration rewards. Yay! Okay, so now we have these two pieces, right? They're going to go on the front. But again, they've got to be cut, too, because uh, that's not going to work. So... <clears throat> The first thing I'm going to tell you that's very handy to do is to take one of the pieces and turn it so that you have the design that you want to have on both pieces of the outside. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want this, the pine cone, this um, print to show. So I want the papers stacked so that if you turn it upside down, you still see the same print. Okay. Now, guess what? We're going to cut some angles again. Yeah, I love this paper too. I really do. Um, as much as I love that cranberry looking piece of paper, I really like this. It's so pretty. Okay. Now, we're going to do kind of the same thing, right? Uh, we are going to put this in the track really the same thing. Put it in the track and go to the one and a half inch mark. Sounding familiar? Yes. Okay. Now make sure they're all together, very straight, like little soldiers. And then you're going to go with the point that you've cut already. Okay. Pivot it. Make sure that your papers are together. Or guess what? You'll be doing it again and then cut. Okay. Now, when you open them up, oh my gosh, what just happened there? It's um, magic. I was trying to think of, oh, it's some David Copperfield stuff going on tonight. Yeah, yeah, baby. Okay, right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Looks very vintage. Okay, we'll try and do it justice. Okay, and 
Now that we have that cut, we're gonna want an insert. I'm just gonna go with white. I think it's just, it shows up, it's nice and bright, and we can do a little stamping on it if we want to. Let's see, I have this cut. Is it four by five and a quarter? No, of course not. Don't be silly. Okay, this one's gotta be big enough. All right, so we want our insert. Ta-da! <laughs> oh God, here come the dogs. <laughs> of course. You guys, I'm just being silly. <laughs> what's new? They go, what's new? Please, lady. Sum it down now. Okay. <clears throat> now for this. So this is what's left after you kind of cut your triangles off. If you are someone who wants to keep every piece of paper, you could make something really cool with these little um, triangles. I know you can. Okay, I'm going to make the belly band. I think it's one inch. I think I felt like, let's see. Let me go back here. Yeah, one by 11. I just took a whole strip. It's going to be trimmed, but we're gonna do that on the fly. We are going to score it and um, trim it once it's around the card. Guess why? Because just like with a real belt, sometimes if you don't put it on and then tighten it first, you know, it's a little too tight. So um, we're gonna make sure that our belly band for our card is not uncomfortable for our card. It's the least we can do. Hello, Peggy. Very nice to see you in Minnesota, which I bet is kind of cold. Sorry for that really lame accent. I know it's not doesn't sound anything like you guys. Um. Okay, I'm gonna bring this in now. Da da da. Grid paper. You can purchase it in the annual catalog. It's handy. And let me just put a few of these pieces away. Oh my gosh, am I gonna stay organized tonight? I mean, what? Get out. Get out of town. You two, go have your little doggy dreams. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm out of adhesives. Well, we'll see how far we get. Now, I told myself, Lisa, Lynn, before you go live, get your adhesive situation in order. Did I? No. Okay, this one looks all right. The, oh, eek, look at that. Danger, Will Robinson. Okay, I think we'll be fine. We have some glue dots. I, Jill, you just need to know that I'm going to pop on at least for the foreseeable future a couple times a week. It is Tuesday tonight, though. If you speak French, it's Marty. <laughs> and again, sorry for the accent. If you're a French speaking individual, I'm sure it's off. But um, you know, I do love my French. Okay, I'm definitely going to use those pine cones with this little beautiful setup we've got going on. Jill, I'm sure you've made this before. It's a fun fold card. Yeah, it's an angled, I don't know, triangle fold card, or whatever. What did I call it before? Tapered angle fold. Man, I want to make it sound so much more shishi than it is. Tapered angle fold. Okay, now let's start burnishing because this is really what's going to set any fun fold apart from looking so so. That's it. It's just easy, but um, you've got to do it because it makes everything sit the way you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't speak French, it's still Marty, but just maybe you don't know that. Okay, so now I have these two pieces that I cut, right? You just have to kind of figure out which one goes where. And then let's just adhere those and get them out of the way, okay? Because we're not doing anything else to them. Cat destroying, you know it. Tuesday night, I'm live. I'm live. Yay! Now listen, you guys, I announced this at the beginning, but I'm so happy to tell you that the Stamping Zoo now has five members and me. Yes. Is that crazy? 
It's so fun. I'm so excited. So um, that was just, that deal is too good to pass up. And if you've been like on the fence, I don't know why you would be, but if you've been on the fence, girl, you've only got a couple more hours to get off the fence, purchase that great deal. And I would love it if you would sign up to join my team. Ask me how, right? Or you can look at various links I've posted um, about it because it is such a great deal. Okay, beautiful papers. And then, oh, look at that. And then I like to like choose the one that like my cutting is a little bit off right there. Yeah, okay. Um, I like to just choose the side that I think looks better. <laughs> so it's kind of like a little wrap dress. We're kind of making a little wrap dress little DKNY action here. And then um, I am going to glue in, no, I think I want to stamp on that, so. I, it is pretty, isn't it, Kathleen? Oh, so pretty, I know. I gotta keep you girls on your toes. I am, you know, I'm sick of you just thinking I only show up on Thursdays, so I decided to bam, throw a Tuesday in there on ya, right? Okay. Let's put some images on the inside and let's use um, the other stamp set from this suite to put our sentiment in. I love this. The script is, I don't know, it's casual but still a little dressy, right? Kind of like the wrap dress. So anyway, um, I like all of these. It's really, they're really, it's a hard choice. Um, hmm. I think I'm just kind of going to go with Merry Christmas. Why not? I think it'll look really pretty. Just kind of spread across there and then we're going to um, stamp some pine cones and stuff. Okay, so we need some blocks. Definitely. Now, I do want to try out the evening evergreen just to see exactly how dark it is. Hello Ethel and thank you for sharing. You're a peach. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'll use some other colors on, you know, I want to bring in some browns obviously for the pine cones. So, um, I will leave that for those. Oh, so sweet. Isn't that pretty? And there's a die that, of course, cuts it out. Mm-hmm. Makes it look really special. And this die actually even has a beveled edge. So we're not using it tonight, right? But um, it doesn't mean we won't use it some other night. I got a lot of things up my sleeve. And I'm not even wearing sleeves tonight. That should tell you I really don't have anything up my sleeve. But you know what I mean. Oh, it's so nice and quiet here tonight. That is one nice thing about it getting colder. Oops, excuse me. That is one nice thing about it getting colder and darker early is that um, really quiets down on all the riffraff, you know? The activity outside. Everybody takes it in. Like we walked tonight at, oh, I left here about 5.15. And that's not that late, even by my standards. Um, but there weren't a lot of people out besides people driving in their cars. So, and yesterday it was, well, it was, it is beautiful weather, but again, we're getting sucked in by this gross pollution that happens down in valleys nowadays. So um, that's going to be really joyful. Basically it makes it look like dusk all day long. It messes with your head a little bit. Okay, let's play with these. Now, you saw me just blocking up two of what it looks like two pine cones. This is two step stamping for these images. And so I grabbed the big fluffy pine cone and this one that looks like nobody'd want that for a pine cone because it's actually the inside of the pine cone. So if you were going to color this and it was a line drawing down in the deepest parts of the pine cone, it would be darker. So that's what we're going to try and emulate here. 
create with our um, two-step stamping. And of course, I want to go to my friend, Soft Suede. Soft Suede's a good one. So let's try this. I'm going to have the inside, of course. Now that's being a little weird. Soft Suede, I was just bragging about you. I was I having a hard time picking up ink? I'm going to do this first generation, full strength. Let's see, it kind of picked it up. Um, we may have to give Soft Suede a vacation or something. It kind of picked it up differently. Oh, I also know what I'm doing wrong. What am I doing? I need my paper piercing mat. Ta da! Hey, hola, Katie. I can't believe you're watching this right now. I hope you guys are having a nice time down there. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Well, yes, it does sound like fun. <sighs> hope you're getting some, look like you were getting some sun, girl. Okay, so now I'm coming over this. I think you can see that pretty good on the camera. And now that I have all the dark spots in there, I think it's easier to see where you might want the light part of the pine cone to go. But if you feel like it's easier to do the whole pine cone first and then put in the little images, that's fine. And you know what? That wonky stamping, I think, really worked to our benefit. I hope I use that. Probably have to try and use that on the front. Now that I know what that's going to look like, the colors for the pine cone are just soft, a very persnickety soft suede. <laughs> And that's it, first and second generation. So I love that. So I'm gonna do that very same thing only with the smaller one on the inside. And so it's the same, same process, okay? If you don't have a bazillion blocks like I do, that's all right. Just clean your stamps, put them, oh my gosh, what is that? Now I'm gonna have to speckle the inside. Oh well, that's a good opportunity. Okay. Now is the test. Can she do it? So let's see, I think I'm gonna put one here. Okay, you definitely need to use the piercing mat when you are using this or your pine cones are gonna look Funkamunk. It's a word, people. Pick it up. Ooh, yes. Gorge. I'm going to put another one. I like it so much. I'm going to put another one up on the top. Remember, this guy is. Oh, and I don't want to get too close to the top. Remember what I said? Uh, this one is first generation. This one is going to be second. Uh, feel free to experiment, of course, with things like cinnamon cider. That would make a beautiful pine cone. You know, I have tons of conifers in my yard now, and they all have different pine cones. <laughs> Some of them are bright green at different times of the year. So you just do your own thing with your pine cones, all right? You do not have to just stick to brown. Although it's lovely. Makes a lovely little pine cone. Okay, let's see. Now, I don't know that I want to put the berries in. I don't think I want to. I think I just want to play with different colors of green. Um, let's see. And also, we do have the dyes for the holly leaves. And maybe we want some of that to layer um, on the front. So these are the pieces I'm going to be cutting out for the front or that I'm using as an option for the front. Let's, again, let's see what second generation evening evergreen is. The cool thing with these super dark colors is that you can get a lot of generations of stamping off of them. That's pretty. Uh, let's see, do I want to do a first generation? Why not? I might want one of each. Mm, that's nice. Now these spots, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to have like a 
watercolory type feel. And so you can see actually that it's etched out on the stamp. Maybe you can see that. Hey, thanks for the love. If you're liking it, it doesn't hurt to give me the thumbs up or the heart or the happy face or the laughing face. I don't know, the laughing face. Uh, 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 uh. Do not give me the angry face. No, I don't like that. I will track you down. <laughs> not really. Facebook could probably think that's a threat. I'm just kidding, Facebook. For Pete's sake. Uh, I also think, okay, the only colors I'm using on the pine cones, Peggy, are soft suede. It's just that it's first and second generation. I also think, of course, yes, there we go, the ha ha. <laughs> if I had time, I would draw a face on this and then you would really see it laughing. Okay, soft succulent is going to go great. It's probably one of those colors in there. So let's do another piece of greenery in that so we have some choice. And then maybe we'll put that on the inside as well. This is going to be a card that's just going to have a signature on it. Lots of my Christmas cards just have signatures on it because, well, a couple of reasons. First of all, I see all of you and talk to all of you on Facebook. So there's no sense. Thank you. Look at all those thumbs up. There's no sense in writing a big long story when like we follow each other on Facebook. And secondly, I've already made the card. I feel like that's enough. <laughs> right? Like that's enough. Okay. I've already made you a card. If I, I, if I don't get you a whole long story put in there, then I'm sorry. Yes, hello, Sonia. Sonia always pops on here and shares. She's a good little sharer. That's how Canadians are. They're just lovely. I was lucky enough to get to stamp last night with Jen Houston's team, the Artsy Hearts. And I'm glad she didn't call me Artsy Farts. That wouldn't have been very nice. She would be like, I don't know why I can't get anyone to join my team. But anyway, no, the Artsy Hearts. They're beautiful Canadian ladies. Loved them all. And um, it was really fun. So that I appreciated that so much. And unfortunately, it was just, you know, because it was Thanksgiving here. Um, everybody had already had plans. So nobody else could make it but me. But girl, I was there. A cinnamon cider. Corinne says she uses cinnamon cider and early espresso. For the pine cones. Oh, cinnamon cider and early espresso. So it'd be super dark. And then this kind of reddish brown. I like that. Oh, yes. That is really good. We'll have to try that. I like that. And I'm trying to work in some greenery here, but I'm having kind of a hard time. I think what I'm going to do on the inside is use these little dots these little texture dots, right? And then um, I may have to splatter a little bit because somebody got ink over here, but let's see if I can camouflage it. Oh, yes, so awesome. These little stamps come in handy, don't they? See, maybe that was the reason I got those out. Oh, I should have turned it around there. It's a little a little too uniform, isn't it? But let's see if I can switch it up somehow. All right, I'll stop now. I could polka dot this whole paper. I'm in love with this little stamp. Okay. That looks fun. All right. Now we can just worry about the front. And so I want to see what this stamp looks like. I don't even know if I've used that stamp yet. Let's check it out. Um, okay, there are holly berries. I, here are the holly berries. See them? You can either stamp them and die cut them separately. There's a die cut just for the berries. Or you can put them on this stem and then cut that out. So either way you do them, if they're on the stem, you can die cut them here. Or if you just wanna cut the berries separately, which is what I've been doing a lot, 
you can just cut them here. Lots of options. Oh my gosh, lots of options with this set. Okay, let's see what this thing looks like in soft succulent. I was bragging that I was going to use that. Let's see. Oh, it's quite pretty. I actually kind of like the way that is um, a little more light and airy than those holly leaves. I like that. Okay, and I'm going to make a small pine cone for the front as well. This, when you get this set and start playing with it, it really, it's just fun. You can just sit and stamp all of your images, right? You can make it sample, simple stamping just with a single layer, or you can do a combination like I am, or die cut every single image. <laughs> no, that's good, Roz. There's a lot of option in this um, stamp set. There's lots of different, you know, there's holly berries and then there's those tiny, little dots so there's all sorts of fun stuff in here okay now I have to bring my two pine cone stamps back at the same time and look at them that's how I know which one is which otherwise I get confused I do okay now I can see clearly this one's the fatter one right outside inside okay I think I have a nice room to put it right over here and soft suede. So is anybody else crafting with me tonight? I know that not everybody's finished with their Christmas things. At least, please tell me you're not. Kathleen, you can just be silent because I know you're finished. But is everybody else kind of with me? Kind of like, oh, hey, I have a great idea. Um... In fact, you know, I make lots of cards for classes and things. Um, but I have a certain bundle that I want to use just for my Christmas cards. I have not used it with you. Not once. Can you guess what it is? You guys can guess if you want. I mean, if you guess right, I'll tell you. But um, I don't have any cards made with it yet. So, you know, don't put any, don't put any bets on it. Oh, nice, Leslie. You're making the snowman out of the penguins. Jill, you've made 90 Christmas cards for crying in the soup. That is a lot. I I do send out about 90, but I don't know. Sometimes some of them get made like the 20th. I'm not going to lie. I am going to, I announced this last night in Jen's group. And I know I'm not the one, like, I'm not the, there are other groups that are like this, so I don't want you thinking, like, I'm taking credit for making this up. But I am going to start an exclusive Facebook group in January. Anyone can join. And I don't know the name of it yet, but it's going to be something super cute. And we will be working on Christmas cards all year long. And we'll have different, um, I'll post, or, you know, me and other people will post different themes and different challenges and we'll have prizes and all sorts of fun stuff but it's going to be about Christmas cards <laughs> oh Jill yes you do like way too many people <laughs> okay back to the belly band now like I was telling you before I used to try and measure it and then score it you know what it, it always looks worse it always looks worse and it's never as big as it needs to be because you really have to take into account how thick your card is. And every card's different. Every card lays differently. So I highly recommend just doing it this way, which is taking an 11 inch strip. You know that's going to be more than enough. Start in the middle because that's where we're going to hide it with, um, in this case, our pine cones. Okay. Start in the middle and then just wrap it. And make sure this is nice and even. And once it is, bring in some snips. And now you want a little overage because this is where you're going to attach these two or the strips. You can attach the two ends, right? And then that's it. Oh, so cute. 
And finally, how you're going to adhere that is your choice, but I will use Seal Plus unless it's empty. Remember what I was telling you about that? Let's see. I don't know. Let's try it. You just gotta try it. Okay, so I kind of look and see like, okay, I have about a half an inch in there. And I try to cover that spot. Okay. And then when I bring this in, don't smash it as flat as it can. Okay, again, give your girl a little breathing room here. You don't want it falling down off the card. But I guarantee you, we almost always put these things too tight and never not tight enough. So don't be too worried. Just make sure that your um, pieces line up right? And then just kind of be gentle with it. Make sure it can still open. And then hopefully you have done it so that it's snug, but that, um, you know, it can be put back on. Yay. Um, so anyway, yes, you'll definitely, you'll get written instructions. And I know that for sure because they're already done. So I'll be more than happy to send them out because I think everyone needs to make this card because it's really fun. Okay, so let's do our decorations for the front. Now that we've been working on all those other pieces and parts, I think it's a really pretty card. I don't even know um, who I'm gonna send it to, of course. Let's see here. It is 7.53. I guess it's legal time. All right, sorry, we need a, a commercial break. Okay, Cash, let Tango have a good snack first. You're always first. Get down. There you go, Tango. Okay, you need to sit down. Sit down. There you go. Go away. Okay. Whew. They didn't think they were going to make it, Mom. That was a tough one, Mom. 7.53. Okay, I am getting out some plates that are not quite warped like everything else, I, or like the ones I've been using. I was acting like I was never going to be able to use, get a new set of plates again. I don't know why. Like, I can afford it, and they're not that expensive. But man, I was holding on to those things. They were all riggedy, riggedy. It was like, you know, I don't know what my problem was. So, okay. And then this little guy here, they're nice and snug, right? And then this has a die cut, I'm sure. Because they all do. What? Oh, maybe it's this thing. If it doesn't, I'm going to say it's like lost. Oh, Gosh, are you kidding me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, it is somewhere. You know what, you guys? I'm gonna try and find it. But if not, I may have to do some other some other pivot. Let me look in my die case real quickly. Sorry about that. They're around. I'm just not sure where. Sometimes they fall into the bottom of this thing. Okay, there's something. Oh, I know what that is. No. No. Brother. Sorry, guys. I'm still here, I promise. My dies won't walk about. Okay, there's, nope. Oh man, I love that little image. Let's see. Well, I don't know. I am not sure about that. We're going to have to change our minds on that. 
Either I lost the die or there's not a die. I don't know yet. But you know what? It's all right. It's going to be, of course, Jean, it's going to be in the last place I look. I probably put it in an envelope and sent it to somebody. <laughs> I hope it didn't get vacuumed up. Oh. You know what? I am so happy to say I have a cleaning lady now that comes every couple of weeks. However, sometimes I, if I drop dyes, I remember they're down there, but I don't pick them up immediately. And um, there was this one from the tropical, the, the dyes with the pineapple. And there's three of the cutest little flowers. <laughs> and it was, in this household, there was a dye like that. And you know what? I left it down there too long and um, Gloria came along and sucked it up and didn't even know any better. So, my bad. Oh, I don't have any missing. It's just that there's not a die for that. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, I... It must be in front of me and I just can't see it, but in any case, no big. We're going to make something else. We are going to use, let's make sure that I choose something that I know. I think it's this one. It's very close to it. And guess what? It has a die. Yeah, it's just a little different, isn't it? That's all right. Hey, Natasha, how are you doing? Natasha, let's see here. Natasha, you need to be in Jen's um, Stampin' Up! group. She's so fun. She has a great group of ladies. Okay, soft succulento coming our way. Isn't it the one underneath the holly dies? This one? No, that is for this. I don't think so. It might, like I said, it might be right here, but it's not that either. Uh, no. Unless I miscounted, I think I'm good. I will look in the catalog and tell you for sure, just so we know. I just assumed every image was in there. Uh oh. I might be getting a package or something right now. Guys, you're all right. Guys. Hey, boys. Stop it. Also, sometimes they just hear me clacking around here and they think somebody's trying to kill us. Oh my. So we live in such a dangerous neighborhood. Now, I had no idea, of course, you know. Oh, you have a demo there. She only does in real life. But you could be the demo, Natasha. That's what I'm saying. You could be the demo. <laughs> okay. Maybe you're telling me you're already on someone else's team. Is that what you're saying? You're a team member, but you're on someone else's team. That's possible. Okay, that's really pretty and it's going to look great with this. Now let's come along with this. Next one, I'm gonna cut out three. I just feel like we're probably gonna use three and then we have two pine cones, you know. Uh, Roz, I saw that too. She's saying somebody checked Somebody in Boise returned a library book that was checked out 109 years ago. Can you believe that? And um, I could, I remember looking at the title and stuff, but I can't remember what it was now. But I mean, it's kind of cute. I know, 109 years. They must have found it in some house they were, you know, redoing or. Somebody's grandparents passed away. Oh. Can you believe? Would a grandparent ever be late with a library book? Never. Okay, now I think I want... 
I don't want anything too crazy back behind it for the dye. I mean, I'm tempted to use this one, but no, it's too long. I almost think I just want to die cut a piece of vellum. Either this. Yeah, that's nice. So let's die cut a piece of vellum and then we will arrange. So vellum is just going to act as kind of a, a buffer between that DSP and our die cut images so that our, our eyes get a little bit of a break, right? Makes our images stand out a little bit more. So let's just do a little bit of that. <laughs> I know, one heck of a fine. Very cute. Um, do you guys know that library books gross me out? They haven't always, but as I've gotten older, I get more and more weird about, well, more and more weird. Let's just leave it at that. And, um, uh -uh, can't do it. Too germy. I mean, I'm too, too much of a germaphobe now. Can't do it. Love the library. Want to support the library. Just don't want to go there and touch the books or really anything else. Use the soft, oh, Roz, you brilliant. Soft succulent vellum on its way. Forget we have all these tricks sometimes. Okay, let me see, can I find it? What? Where is it? No, it's not snacks, guys. It's just me looking for paper. It's just me looking for paper, Cashy. It's not a snack. Snack time's over. For you, anyway. I might have something. Okay, I am currently looking for the vellum. Hold, please. Roz had a fantastic idea. Oh, yeah. So we have the... We have a package of vellum in all of the 21 to 23 in colors. The number is 155616 if you're interested. And I think they were 12 by 12, but I cut them down. Man, I use the heck out of them. I hope I have a piece big enough. And there is evening evergreen too, but um, I like the idea of the soft succulent a lot. I might get it on that one. Um, so you can emboss this stuff. I mean, running through the dry embosser. Okay, apparently I used something where I was measuring out big strips. <laughs> Let's see, that one looks a tiny bit bigger. I don't know. Jean, you've read 144 books this year. Have you read 12 books a month? My God, I'm so impressed. And hey, I'm happy that you go to the library and get your books there. Um, I just have a mental thing, a mental hang up. And I'm only 52. I don't know where it's gonna take me. But um, I'll, let me tell you, COVID didn't help. COVID didn't, has not helped my germophobia. Uh -uh. I'm going to be a regular Howard Hughes before this thing is all done, I think. Um, but I love electronic books. I love my ebooks. I love audiobooks. Let's see if this worked. Oh my gosh. If it did, it was like just cut for this thing. I love, Jean, I would love to pick your brain about some of the books you've read sometime. Um, if you don't mind. I think that would be really fun. I actually belong to a little group of. Um, a lot of people just from various groups. If you guys are, if anybody's interested in joining this Facebook group, we don't have a book that we read together or anything. We just kind of talk about books. You know, it's like a, it's like a place where you can get book recommendations, but it's not Goodreads. Okay. Roz had this stellar idea. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. It is gorgeous, Vellum. This is fine. If you have this, go with this. But this totally mutes the, um, 
it's totally meets the design. So good job. Um, I think it's called new chapter. I think it's called that. Um, but I can send you the link if you're interested. So it's some people that I went to school with, like grade school, high school. Um, a couple of you, I think already, I just, um, one of our friends that we grew up with is in Norway. And so she talks a lot about, um, you know, obviously she's reading different books than we are sometimes. And that's really fun to find out, you know, her take on things. Uh, hello, where'd that third thing go? Where my, oh, here it is. So, there. Whew. Okay, so now we just need to put together all these beautiful little nature elements. This, I'm telling you, this um, bundle is quite something. It's just really beautiful. So I'm gonna dry fit these right now. I'm feeling like oh, I don't really know what to do with them. So I want to dry fit them first. Then I'll basically pick them up in pieces and parts at least and um, adhere them. Okay, good, Ross. What about a month ago? What happened about a month ago, Jill? Okay. Uh, glue dots. Glue dots is the name of this game when you're working with vellum, okay? So put some on there. I'm going to start a new series too. I think I'm finally going to start Yellowstone. I've been watching the Americans and I got to get off that. It's getting dark. I mean, I like it, but I'm on the last series or the, on the last season. And I'm like, okay, I think it's time to nip it or I'm going to have more problems than just being a germaphobe. <laughs> but man, it's been a good series and there were seven seasons. So that's really fun. One of your all-time favorites. Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, I'm so glad it's in the annual catalog. So I don't have to go scrounging up a bunch of it. Okay, so really just putting these down. Kind of in a triangle. Thanks for reminding me about it. Because I used a lot of it when it first came out. I think I made things for... Uh, new catalog launch. And then, you know, I just kind of put it away and forgot about it. Okay, this is going to go up on dimensionals. I think this one is going to lay flat. Yes. These pine cones, though, don't you dig it? Look at them. They're so cute. Um, they're just adorable. Now, before we finish, Please don't let me forget. Uh, I want to use, I want to try out Corinne's combination of cinnamon cider and early espresso because that sounds like it would be a knockout pine cone as well. Little dimensionals on this guy. I got minis coming off from Lord knows where. All sorts of things. Here's a, look at that. Ooh, that probably freaked some of you out. That was just sitting in the middle. I, don't ask me how that happened. I didn't do it on purpose. It is kind of funny. Okay. Oh, so pretty. So I will tell you after this, yeah, I should make another 10 or 15 Christmas cards. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go lay down in my bed and probably watch some TV and probably pet one or both dogs while I'm doing that, right? Okay, let's get a little bit of shimmer, uh, shimmery embellishment, because of course we have to have that. I need to put this some of this paper away quickly. It's in my way. Okay. I run an orderly ship, but it's a full ship. So I need to have access to my drawers. We could use that. It is um, shaded spruce, I believe. 
So it's not, you know, it's not even evergreen, but it's very close. Um, yeah, I'm going to use that because I'm just kind of sticking with, uh, I just really want to like honor this DSP. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, let's get this guy down. Some more um, Seal Plus, right? Because this is going to be like a movable part. Anytime there's a movable part, I say you want something strong. Double check it and then it's really easy to see where the middle of this is. And then you can just put a strip of it right there. And then get this centered right where you want it. And put that down. And then let's grab some of these. Yeah, they look good. Because we are using a couple of different greens anyway. So, I like it. Um, ooh, it's pretty. That's all I can say about this card is I think it's just a really pretty card. So, I hope you have all, if you've not tried this yet, you're going to try it now because it's really fun. And Corinne's right. If you do have a paper trimmer that you know, like our paper trimmer that swings around and stuff. It really makes it easy. You can also make the marks though, just, you know, with a pencil and trim them or however you'd like to do that. But I am going to be sending this out. So as long as you sign up for my email list, uh, by Friday morning, you will get this, the, the tutorial for this. And then I would love it if you'd make a picture of it and post it. Thanks, Nancy. And whether you're catching me live or on replay, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for taking time to um, spend a little crafty time with me and uh, put up with my, my musings, right? And just in the end, we get a little card. So thank you so much, and I will see you soon. I'll see you again on Thursday night. How about that, Jill? <laughs> okay, everybody. See you later.